Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 2 of the best of 3 between KD Laker and the man who changed career. In this one we are seeing a faction swap. The man who changed career now on the allied side with the first SSB and KD Laker on the Axis side with the 16th Luftwaffe. This is St. Melaglis, the map, and will be interesting to see how both sides fare with their divisions going into this. Now there are a few things to discuss really. With the first SSB, it's the use of centaurs to counter things like AT-8s that the 16th Luftwaffe might bring out. The other thing is their elite infantry should and can potentially win out in the town. However, with the 16th Luftwaffe, there is the Luftwaffe Pioneers available in Phase A, which is actually a pretty big deal. And it'd be interesting to see if KD Laker you know, makes use of those in order to just destroy the lower strength squads that the man who changed career will be bringing. Um, those Luftwaffe Pioneer squads can generally trade two for one quite easily if they are micro correctly. So yeah, like I said, be interesting to see if that comes, up, uh, comes about. However, at the start over here, KD Lake is actually choosing to bring in Panzer 730Ms. Not something that I've necessarily seen very often. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's happening. That, they are 10 point units with uh, the 10 km per hour off road speed and 15 km per hour on road speed, so absolutely potato speed. Gonna be slowly rolling up to that town, hoping that there's something left for them to kill. Um, then we have followed up there three units of infantry. Not entirely sure if they'll be Luftwaffe Jaeger. Most likely in the town will be Luftwaffe Pioneer. Then we have the Flamethrower squad there by the looks of things. And a command infantry. Followed up is the youth, UE630 Citroëns. This is what I would more likely tend to look for rather than you know three units of these. I'd much rather have one Citroëns just because they're much more versatile in the in their speed. They don't do as much damage as you can see. Their rate of fire is lacking, but the rate of fire is just sort of superficial. Um, but the two mortars are also following up there in the mid, and that is quite a big push heading into the center. On the top side, um, looks like maybe the 88 is coming out to play, plus a command infantry. On the bottom side, maybe two units of Luftwaffe Jaeger or Luftwaffe Pioneer with a command infantry. If we jump over to the side of the first SSB, three units plus the command infantry they're heading to the town, which could be anything from Commando 6 to Commando Sports or Commando Assaults, whatever. All sorts of combinations come out. In my personal preference, this would be like two Commando Assaults and maybe a Commando 6 squad with the uh, command infantry there. Um, but generally, I would probably even put even more into this town. But it looks like there's a, a few units here, maybe one of those will go to the town or they'll head down to the bottom of the map, not entirely sure. But uh, Tank Buster Squad is there and that's something to note actually. With all of these units, none of them have AT. So if these tanks actually start to push down the main street, there's not going to be too much that infantry can do about it. But we're already off, let's just have a look at what's happening on this top side. Centaur, couple units of infantry, command. Uh, Commando Leader and the Humber Mark III with Recon. So Centaur versus Flak 88. Will that work out? We'll have to wait and see if uh, the man who changed career can micro that properly to maybe get the fire position trick in. So these units are all fast moving down to the bottom side. We have, looks like unload po at position and fast move into the town. And on the top side, it's all fast moving into this orchard area. Right, let's watch this engagement because they're definitely getting very close to each other. Here we go. Mortar fire coming down. Flammenwerfer has been dropped out into that building. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good for the man who changed career. He loses one of his infantry squads right off the bat. Grenades are coming in from the Luftwaffe Pioneer. He's dodged out with the Flammenwerfer and he's dodged back into the building. Commando squad goes down as well. Holy crap, that was an insane engagement at the start of the game there. Very, very well played by KD Laker. Intense micro there. Got his Luftwaffe Pioneer into the perfect position uh, to kill off those uh, support squads. And yeah, that was insane. That must have been, I think, two commando assaults and a commando support. 
Luftwaffe Pioneer there engaging the commando assault. It's going to be jumping out the building to avoid the grenade from the assaults. And just really, really well played from Katie Laker here. Making sure he, he like gets those kills. Humber Mark III is going to demolish the command infantry in the top side. And we have a strong push coming down in the bottom side from the man who changed Korea. So this is where the man who changed Korea needs to make it work now. Because he lost his early foothold in the town quite dramatically. But yeah, ground being made either side. Um, this Flak 88 is going to be able to get line of sight onto the Humber Mark III though. And that will cause a lot of presence in this top side. Centaur is going to have to be micro to the 1,200 meter range. But I don't think he's going to find it honestly. He's going to have to rely on getting an infantry unit close to the 88 in order to win that engagement. Unless he can maybe, you know, fire position early. I think that's just what he did there in order to, you know, attempt to, to pin that down before it comes into line of sight. So the Flam... Flammenwerfer got taken out, the flamethrower squad. Uh, Luftwaffe Pioneer are now engaging commando assaults in the open. But do have to be careful of the grenade micro. More grenades coming down from the Luftwaffe Pioneer are going to pin the commando assaults. UE630 Citrulungs is just going to kill off that commando assault in the top side. And another attempt at pushing into the town has been futile from the man who changed career. However, in the top side, Centaur has been micro perfectly to kill off the 88. And that is a big change in the top side. That Centaur needs to get into position to start hammering these Luftwaffe Jaeger. And then what he can do is make a lot of ground there. He's got to kind of avoid this town now. And uh, maybe just concede it. Get some units into this side. The man who changed career can just hold it from, from outside the town. And then push on the top and bottom. Although, it looks like these Commando Fusilier Marines got forced to fall back. The... Commando 6 squad must have got demolished by the Flak Panzer Bren because there is a serious lack of infantry here now. Although this engagement should go in favour of the Commando Leader and the Tank Busters there. Especially with the grenade coming down from the Commando Leader. And that is going to be another two units of infantry dead. However, without a Commando Tank Buster now available, Flak Panzer Bren can quite literally run down all of these units without being threatened whatsoever. Luftwaffe Pioneer finding the Commando Leader. Citrung's hitting the reinforce, reinforcing commando assaults. And it's pretty much just up to the Manning Change Career to you know, control this bottom side. Maybe just take advantage of the top side instead. Because he's still gaining plus one from the 56% territory lead. He's also managed to surround these units with the commando leader. So that's going to reduce the morale and well, give a morale penalty to the Luftwaffe Jäger and the Flak Panzer Bren. So they might be a bit easier to deal with. But this Sherman too... It needs to start rushing down to the bottom side, I think, to take care of that Flak Panzer Bren, because that's a lot more threatening than all of these tanks put together. However, if these tanks do get on target, they will actually demolish infantry squads, so we have to watch out for that. On the top side, Centaur 4 has been hit by the Flak 36 by the looks of things, but took a transmission damage. Currently being attack moved upwards... I'm pretty sure that should have line of sight, surely. Maybe not quite. I would expect to see that stopped and and actually able to hit the AT-8, but yeah, that's not happening. Either way, all of the tanks in the town have now been pinned down uh, due to the Sherman 2 arriving. That Sherman 2 having trouble actually killing them off, though, did take out the Citroëns, has uh, now popped one of them. Commando leader in the bot side going to be ran down by the two Luftwaffe Jäger. Although it looks like they didn't go down easily. Took at least five of these Luftwaffe Jäger with them. Now the Commando Fusilier Marines opening up onto the Luftwaffe Jäger. But the Flak Panzer Bren is going to get on target there. And that's going to hammer those Commando Fusilier Marines into submission. If he's not too careful and he does not want those to surrender right now. He'll be left in a very bad position. So another Sherman II being purchased for the bottom side. He realises that Flak Panzer Bren is a big problem. He's just going to need the infantry here to back it up though. And I feel like the man who changed career is actually lacking some significant infantry at this point. H having lost so many so easily to these Luftwaffe pioneers. Like we saw two star, even three star infantry go down. So like these Luftwaffe pioneers only have one star thanks to the Luftwaffe Führer. So... It's really, really well played by Kaylee Laker in the town. Really great infantry micro. Even recovered the bottom side very well with the flat pans of Bren. So well played there. We've just got to see the man who changed career now. 
you know, win out the engagement in the top side with the Centaur. Um, there has been a pack 38 brought up by KD Laker. It looks like he's going to just try and keep that out of line of sight. Then go for the sneak into the tree line and get the shot there. But it doesn't look like the Manu Change Career is going to let that happen. It's going for the fire position currently. Has definitely a chance of starting to pin down the pack 38 before it even gets into line of sight. But 50 50 now. As we see, the Manu Change Career sitting at 271 points. Sherman 2 has found line of sight, I think, onto the fat pounds of Bren. Oh, never mind, going to be firing at the Luftwaffe Jaeger instead. However, will likely change target. Yep, there we go. Come on, if you use their Marines, they can't be pinned down for long. They won't last. You want those to fall back, just so you have the presence remaining in the bottom side, because if you let the, uh, the Luftwaffe Jaeger kill you off, it's not going to be good. However, returning the favour there, come on, if you use their Marines, taking out the last of one of those squads. Quite easily. Sherman 2 coming up close. <coughs> Sherman 2 coming up close and personal to the 730Ms in the town. And on the top side, Centaur still firing away. Going to be able to almost take care of the Flak 36. Looks like he has a fire position there. Might need to readjust that a little bit. There we go. Much closer to the door, to the mark now. 88 should go down with the shot. Very nice indeed. Well played by the man who changed career there. Commander Fusilier Marines currently engaging the Luftwaffe Jaeger that are pinned down by the Sherman 2. However, another... Well, the Flat Panzer Bren, I think, just retreated maybe. Come around the other side. It's going to end up finishing off that squad out of line of sight of the Sherman 2, which is a bit of a problem. Now, fortunately for the man who changed Korea, there are no Luftwaffe Jäger in the town. Which does mean the Sherman 2 can play very aggressively through the smoke. The issue is, I don't think the man who changed Korea knows that. Or has a chance of knowing that. There could be all sorts of stuff in here. Like, including Luftwaffe Jäger. And you don't want to have to move your Sherman 2 through that smoke and get Panzerfausted in the face. That's not what you want to happen. We do see the Commando 6 squad coming down to the bottom side now. They're going to get pinned a little by the MG34. That's actually going to stop them from moving all the way down to the bot side. Ideally, you'd want to see the infantry coming up here and move down to this bottom road. But I think just the way that they are brought in in general, most units come in through the mid because it's faster. But both of the Sherman 2s moving to the bot side, trying to find this flak panzer bren it looks like the 50 cow actually finished off the 730m there on the sherman 2s with the mg34 revealing itself sherman 2s are going to be opening up commando 6 squad can't really get close they need to get within i think 400 meter range in order to start using that sniper not happening quite yet Minor tank busters have arrived. Going to be taking out one of the one of the Panzer 730Ms. Second one gets bailed out by the Sherman 2. Commando Assault's going to be trying to run down the Luftwaffe Führer. Centaur has arrived in the top side. Take, did manage to take care of the Pack 38. It's a really good job there by the man who changed career. FK288 has arrived, however. Um, can that get a shot onto the Centaur because it does have 9 AP I haven't seen one of these FK288s really take out an infantry or a tank though before that's the issue HS129 is brought in by KD Laker but the man who changed career is not having that gets a Hellcat onto the back of it the Hellcat's actually having trouble pin um, forcing that to fall back but just about manages to make it happen Centaur Still rolling forwards at the moment. Not entirely sure if the man who changed career is aware that this has a decent amount of AP because he does not want to be very close to it if it does. At max range, fine, because 9 AP shouldn't really be able to penetrate 9 armor very well. But in general, the closer you get, the more penetration chance. I feel like the Man who changed career actually shot down the HS129 maybe, or the HS129 might have got away. Not entirely sure, but 
the main thing to look at there is that the HS129 didn't kill the Sherman 2, and that is quite a big deal. Nice reaction from the man who changed career to make sure that didn't happen. But he's got to make sure that he stops this as soon as possible, gets rid of this Flak Panzer Bren. It looks like he might assume it's some infantry or something, which is why he's sending down the Commando 6 squad, but it might not be enough. It, it might just end up that the Flat Panzer Brain kills off the Commando 6 and he loses a very expensive and useful unit for free, which isn't exactly what you want to see. German 2 did have line of sight there briefly onto the Luftwaffe here, I think. Commando supports are moving up, however at that range aren't ideal. Their machine gun, the Vickers K gun here, can't really fire at the 100 meter range. We are seeing a 3 inch mortar now, joining the front line. Bomber going to be coming in, the ME109G2R1. Comes in with a 15 HE power bomb, I believe. And does manage to pin down the commando supports there. But they are in the commando leader range. So not going to be surrendering anytime soon. Looks like uh, Commander Royal Marines were bought in the, in the bot side. The man who changed Korea though. Currently sitting at almost 600 points and still the plus one in his favour, so well played so far, especially around this Centaur 4 on the top side. However, as soon as that Centaur 4 goes down, Man Who Changed Korea could lose a lot of pressure in this game. New 88 has arrived. Can the Centaur get the shot in in time? Oh, looks like he might have just made it. Yes, indeed. Two shot kill onto the 88. Great job. Buckle 190. A8 BR21 going to be coming in with its two rockets. ME109 G2 R1 going to be coming in with its bomb. That's going to be taking out the commando supports. Stops the pinning onto the Luftwaffe Jäger. Now with the Centaur 4 falling back, the FK288 actually has a strong chance of killing off that Centaur. Because that Centaur is going to remain in line of sight for a very long time. So that FK288 should have a lot of shots on target. Even if it doesn't penetrate the first time. It should penetrate the second or the third. It's not in line of sight. He can't be spotted just yet. I think he's just been spotted there. But there we go. Forced to fall back again. The FK-288 has all day long. Second shot does the job anyway. And now with more infantry approaching on the top side. This is a very precarious for the man who changed career. However, it looks like KD Lake is kind of running low on... Luftwaffe Pioneer, otherwise he would likely be bringing those in to reinforce in the town. Instead going to be relying on the Mortar Luftwaffe Jäger combo to take on the Commando Raw Marines. We are well into Phase B, so from here on in, we're likely to see the Commando Raw Marines used as mainline infantry as opposed to the Commando units. So the Raw Marines there actually did quite a lot of damage to the Luftwaffe Jäger. Commando supports are going to be trying to run up and do some damage themselves. They're managing to get the Vickers K gun on target at this range, which is fantastic. However, not being in as hard cover as the Luftwaffe Jaegers, they're going to take just as much damage back due to the likes MG15. Also, the ME109 there, easily able to bomb that out. Commando 6 is going to completely demolish the Luftwaffe Jaeger on the bottom side. And that's going to throw a huge salient in favour of the man who changed career. The plus two now coming out. Minus six squads though find themselves in line of sight of the Flak Panzer Bren. And that Flak Panzer Bren definitely has a big chance of actually killing off the Commando Six entirely. But at least that gives the man who changed career a good idea of where the Flak Panzer Bren now is. So going to be moving that down there to kill that off. And once he does so can begin to solidify his position. Currently in his weakest phase as well, so being able to hold on in phase B when you've only got 80 income per minute is quite important. Sherman 2 going to be finding the close range shot onto the Flak Panzer Bren there as soon as that gets forced to fall back. Sherman 2 should finish it off no problem. ME109 G2 R1 going to be coming into the line of sight of the Hellcat and the Sea Fire and that goes down very convincingly with the help of the Bofors. We do see a Flak Panzer Bren rocking it up the middle of the town there. Gets taken down by the Commando Tank Busters. And these Commando Royal Marines that look like they were forgotten are now moving up to reinforce the bottom side. 
So 56% territory now for the man who changed career. A new centaur for arriving in the top side. Rockets coming down from the Hellcat. Oh, wow, that's really, really well played there. The Centaur 4 actually managed to get the kill onto the AA unit, the Citrurungs, I think that is. Uh, actually, no, it's not the Citrurungs, is it? It's the Drilling. The Drilling 2000. Uh, really, really fantastic job. Focke Wolf 190 A8 also going to be in the sights of the Seafire L3, but the Seafire runs out of ammunition before it gets the kill, and that is one bad thing about the Seafire. It may be a very fast, very good agility recon aircraft, but it doesn't quite have the ammo. So Centaur going to be able to engage the FK-288 from max range, and the FK-288 I don't think can fire back with its main gun. And actually, it does have the 1200m range. Maybe it has to be manually asked to fire in that case. But did find the line of sight there, so Centaur for doing the job. HS129 going to be brought in. Oh, HS129 goes for the Sherman 2 in the bot side after the 88 pops the Centaur. The Centaur on the bottom side not microed as well as in the top side. The 88 goes ahead and gets the kill there. Commando 6 is going to be taken down by the Luftwaffe Jäger before the Luftwaffe gets pinned. And, well, things are, again, looking quite precarious, but the man who changed career is still holding on to this lead, to this plus one with 55% territory lead. Nice dodge out there to avoid some damage onto the Commander Raw Marines. Sea Fire is brought in here, but the AT-8 should be able to hit the Sea Fire quite hard. Seafire taking a couple shots there. Doesn't want to get too close to the enemy air spawn, I don't think. Otherwise, he could end up finding his Seafire shot down quite easily. Maybe not this time round. In the bottom, or in the top, however. Luftwaffe Fusilier pushing forwards with the Flat Panzer Bren. That Flat Panzer Bren is chewing apart infantry here out of line of sight of the Centaur. So not much the man who changed career can do about that. And it seems that the FK-288 has found... Well... It's using HE <laughs> to fire at the Centaur. Maybe pinning it down a little bit before the Stug 3 arrives. That Stug 3 should definitely deal with the Centaur quite easily. There's also a Stug coming down the, in the town now. This has got to be pretty careful. Doesn't want to bump into one of these Piats, especially considering in B and C, first SSB does have Piats on their Raw Marines. Wolf 190 going to be coming in with the two rockets onto the commando supports, pinning those down. Flat Panzer Bren should be able to chew them up. Centaur was firing a shot at the Flat Panzer Bren, but the, he's got to be careful of the Stug. Looks like he's just trying to keep out of range of that Stug at the moment. This is allowing the Flat Panzer Bren to do what it wants. And the Seafire there taking a lot of damage from the Flat Panzer Bren as well. So, Commando Royal Marines have moved into the buildings on the bottom side. Commando Royal Marines have moved in with a Centaur 4 to just below the town. That Centaur 4 needs to find the second shot onto this AT-8. Because if he can, that will open up the bottom side of the map for the taking. On the top side, however, with the Stug 3 in range of the Centaur 4, Things aren't looking good up here anymore. And the initial play around the first Centaur 4 worked really well. But I feel like now we're in Phase B and C. I've just moved into Phase C now. It looks like Katie Lake has found the counter that he needed, which was these Stug 3s. So he's just going to be keeping firing at the Centaur there until it goes down. And now the only thing holding the top side is this Commando Support Squad with one health left. Bomber well, does come into the bottom side as well. ME109 going to bomb out the Commando Royal Marines that were chasing down the Luftwaffe Jäger. Hellcat does get onto the back of it, but going to be saved just by the drilling. The Neg 2... Oh, 4,500 drilling. Going to be doing the job there. Oh, actually got the kill as well <laughs> onto the Hellcat. Fantastic potency, love it. Alright, in the top side, KD Lake is pushing back. 
Looks like the man who changed careers almost ran out of steam, but he should be able to start making use of the 160 points per minute that he's gaining in phase C. The only issue with the first SSB is what do you spend that 160 points on? You've got to maybe start investing in uh, the... You're going to start investing in the 25 pounders to hold them back. But then there's not much other substance that you can really rely on. It, by this point, you've generally used up a lot of your infantry, and the amount of infantry availability he lost towards the start of the game in the town was absolutely devastating for his later chances in this game. So that's something that might be affecting him now quite significantly. The Centaur 4 was trying to kill off the 88, but it looks like he's forced back for now. Man Change Career has pinged that, so he knows its location and doesn't forget about it. On the bottom side, however, Sherman 2, having been forced to fall back, is being ran down by Luffafiego. It's up to the Raw Marines to stop those from getting close enough to fire their Panzerfaust. Otherwise, Sherman 2 is going to be in big trouble. It doesn't look like it's going to matter anyway as the HS129 comes in, does manage to get the kill. And now there's only one Sherman 2 left on the map. Command Churchill 7 is arriving on the top side. That will be perfect for engaging the Stugs. So I like the choice of unit there. And maybe if he can kill the Stug, he can end up taking back the ground in the top side and maintain his lead. But currently we're back to 50-50. KD Lake has recovered this very well indeed. Now he's just got to find the plus one himself in order to secure the victory. The 88 finding the shot onto the Centaur. And now is going to be taking on the Commando Royal Marines there. More infantry arriving from the 16th Luftwaffe. The pain train doesn't stop when it comes to the 16th Luftwaffe. They have infantry for days. Stug 3 going to be uh, smashing Commando Royal Marines as they come up here. Morris LRC Recon arriving. Not sure what that can do against the Stug 3, but the Churchill 7 might quite might just about save the day. We also see a Command Infantry coming up to help out. The Morris LRC does have the Bren to fire at the Luffa Jaeger. There we go. <laughs> Such a miserable attempt from the Morris LRC there. Trying to use its rifle to take out the Stug 3 but not quite pulling that off for some reason <laughs> Command Churchill is the perfect unit though so as long as he keeps the infantry alive doesn't let it get surrendered that Stug 3 could go down and things will swing back in the favour of the man who changed career but on the bottom side there's another issue you know the drilling's now hammering the Commando Mar Raw Marines. There's actually Luftwaffe Jäger behind them as well, which is actually really risky because if there's no command here, they're just going to get surrendered. Air engagements are still continuing. Looks like uh, Sea Fire coming in onto the back of the Focke-Wulf A8 BR-21 might be able to get the kill. Will indeed. The other Sea Fire did not, letting the, the, letting the team down there for sure. So what does the man who changed career have to do here? We could probably do with the A Morris LRC actually in the bottom side because that would be able to take out the NAG 4500 drilling quite easy. But this drilling now just charging down the Commando Royal Marines. He's got an on, on an attack move up. I'm assuming to make sure he doesn't get strafed by like air, like an air force, um, but I would have just expected that to like fast move around and just get the surrender quickly rather than come off the road there. Either way, crocodile now on the way, and uh, that's definitely going to be useful for taking on these units. Just got to be careful that he doesn't run into the line of sight of this AT8. Let's see if he can see it, because if he can see the AT8, what he wants to do with the crocodile is move behind this building then pop out in the 1000 meter range to get the kill. HS129 tries to get the kill onto the crocodile, not quite gonna let that happen. Nag drilling gonna be forcing the Seafire to fall back, almost picking up the kill. That crocodile though with the reduced accuracy is gonna be having a hard time against the 88 and the 88 now has plenty of shots on target to get the kill and that's gonna be a very dead crocodile. So that's a shame. In the top side, Commander Royal Marines 
are taking on the Luftwaffe Jäger quite nicely. However, it seems that the man who changed career is hesitant to charge down the Stug 3. And one thing we can see here is that with the plus one in KD Laker's favour, it's currently going to be a draw at the end of the game. Hellcat being forced back on the bottom side. Looks like they rocketed the Luftwaffe Jäger there. So, what can the man who changed career do? I'm not entirely sure. With the crocodile lost on this bottom side, that is devastating, really. Because if he'd killed off the 88 with that first shot, you know, and it had been accurate, that would have changed the front down here so much. But since the crocodile is now dead, the bottom side is completely falling apart. Plus two now in favour of KD Laker. An 88 has joined the Stug in the top side. The Stug going to be engaging the infantry. It looks like both tanks taking respective pot shots at enemy infantry. But it looks like we're not going to be having a game three at this rate. <laughs> Especially with KD Laker pushing so hard on the bottom side, making the plus two. It's pretty insane. The Morris LRC is coming out, actually. So maybe that can pick off the drilling. And the flak panzer Bren. Just got to make sure it doesn't get killed by the AT-8. Because the only thing that you really need down here in order to stop this push coming through is just a little, a little bit of armor. And just keep it out of range of the Panzerfaust and you're good. In the town, little engagement between Commander Royal Marines and the Luftwaffe Pioneer. Some nice micro there from both players. Looks like the Luftwaffe, Pi Luftwaffe Pioneers would jump forwards to use their grenade and then move back. Uh, with, uh, the man who changed career managed to get out of the way of that as well so well played on both sides of things we're seeing some off map come in the Morris LRC OP with the rocket battery going to be firing on the far side of the town not too much actually standing in the way though so might be a wasted strike indeed Morris LRC with the Commander Royal Marines here and Commander Leader going to be taking out the Luftwaffe Jäger. Can the Morris LRC pick up the drilling kill? Yes it can. Really, really nice. That's exactly what we were looking for here. Good to see the Morris LRC actually come in handy. Seafire going to be going down the top side though. Looks like the Flak 88 managed to pick that off. Off map is coming in. Still a plus two however for KD Laker. I really hope that the man who changed career can bring this back. Because it would be epic. Oh, a rocket landed on the mark there. Smashes into the Luftwaffe Pioneer. Ta um, it looks like ground is being made in the town, but still, you know, a decent presence in the bottom side causing this map difference. The man who changed Korean can't really slack down here. He's got to get these Royal Marines into this tree line with the Morris LRC to back it up. Because that combination could just kill this combination very easily. I'm assuming that the man who changed Korea is maybe, you know, scared of what's in this orchard area. But he shouldn't be if he's been watching the engagements Please. down here. Because he should ideally know what's going on but in the top side oh no that's not good that's not good at all command churchill went down to the stug three i assume or even the 88 got in line of sight there and that was job done me 109 does bomb out one of the mortars as well okay things <laughs> i think things are starting to fall apart that's a shame 88 must have popped the Morris LRC before being taken out itself but another mortar going to be going down there and yeah that's that's just a shame the Morris LRC dying on this bottom side is is a big deal because it, it removes the fire support that the, the man in change career needed in order to kill off this Black Panzer Bren these Royal Marines should be able to deal with the Luftwaffe Jäger quite well though but yeah losing the the church on the top side just loses all pressure there. Sea fires can't do anything now due to the AA, especially with the drilling here. That drilling just absolutely just tearing the Spitfire out of the sky there. The AA on the side of the 17th 
16th Luftwaffe is incredible. And it looks like Katie Lake has been making great use of it this game. Very interesting units used as well. Those tanks didn't really do too much in the middle. The uh, 730Ms at the start of the game. But they still, you know, caused enough of a distraction. But it forced the man who changed career to divert a Sherman 2 there. They probably would have been better off on the, top, uh, on the bottom side earlier. Um, because he then had to buy in a second Sherman 2 and bring it down to the bottom side, which then still got caught up killing those tanks as well. So Staghound now coming down to the bot instead. The 88's now dead here, so that Staghound should be able to deal with the Flat Panzer Bren without any hiccups. But with that Commander Royal Marine dying, or being surrendered to the Luftwaffe Jaeger, that's a real shame. Also the Crocodile being picked off by the HS-129 is another big deal there. It just makes things so damn difficult. Can the sea fire pick up that kill? Get some revenge. There we go. That's what we like to see. Sweet, sweet revenge. Morris LRC getting the shots onto the flat pans of Bren there. Should eventually find the kill. Stag Cow going to be taking out the MG. The only worry here is that the Luftwaffe Jäger get close enough with the Panzerfaust to kill off the Staghound. HS-129 also flying about could pick up the Armicle kills quite easily. For example there with the Humber Mark III being taken out whilst the Recon are still inside. This, this off map is still going. It's just insane. Also has a go at the Centaur 4 on the top side, but that didn't really stand a chance anyway, especially with the Stoke 3 approaching his position. Plus 3 now in favour of KD Laker. The man who changed career is running out of steam very quickly. With his second crocodile killed, with the Command Churchill dead in the top side. And now the Staghound gone down here. There is not too much substance left in the first SSB, I can tell you that much. I can definitely tell how the man who changed career is feeling at this point because he had such a big chance to win this game. He was playing so well for the first 10 to 20 minutes, apart from obviously the infantry engagement in the town. But after that occurred, he made the right choice to focus on the top and bottom side of the town, which was giving him the lead in the first place. So yeah, really good job by KD Laker. Like, those infantry engagements with the Luftwaffe Pioneer were fantastic. Um, he kind of tried out the 88 suicide tactic, but it didn't really work against uh, the Man Who Changed Careers Centaurs. Um, they were micro quite well. It did in the bottom side, that 88 hanging on and picking up those important kills onto the armour, especially the Crocodile on that bottom side, the first one. When that got killed by the 88, that changed things a lot. And you can just see actually how close the kills and losses were. 2,680 kills to 3,190 losses for the Man Who Changed Career and vice versa for KD Laker, of course. So let's have a look at the 88 kills because I believe, yeah, one of them here took out two centaurs and a crocodile. That was on the bottom side. And this 88 was the one that changed the game in the bottom side. The choice of the Stug 3s was perfect as well, especially the one that came in on, on the top to kill the Centaur. That was really, really good. We also saw these drillings come in, which managed to pick off a couple of the um, aircraft, which is nice. And the HS-129s were, were hitting the mark as well in the end. And uh, this last crocodile <laughs> broke the back of... Uh, of the man who changed career when the HS129 came in and killed it. Nice kills coming out of the Centaur up the top. This is the one that was microed very well. 388 kills in the Pack 38 kill. Commando Tank Busters cleaned up a lot of the Panzer 730Ms and the Sherman 2 coming in there to help out as well. But that was another key point as well. The Sherman 2 being diverted to the center because of these rather than just going straight to the bottom where it would have been a lot more useful. But there you have it. Rocket artillery picking off a couple kills. And what a fantastic game. 
It's a real shame that there's no third game in this series because I believe both of these players are fantastic and hopefully you guys have enjoyed the game as much as I did. Commiserations to the man who changed career who will be knocked out of the tournament and uh, of course congratulations to Katie Laker who will be moving on to round two. Be interesting to see how he does throughout the rest of the tournament. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you then. Goodbye.